don't want to have plenty of people. Thank you, Pat. First committee. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this panel. Uh, this is Team Security Q&A, and this is the first time the team, our team, is doing a presentation like this. So we're very excited to share with you what we have been working with, like maybe give you some insights of some of our job parts, and um, take your questions. All right, so this is how it's going to work. Um, I would like to introduce the team first. Uh, these are my colleagues. This is Grimi. He is our billing specialist. He mostly specializes in the fraud payments, um, in very tough investigations. He has been since CCP uh, since 2003. That's pretty a lot. Um, and yeah, and he handles all of the RMT payments. Uh, this is Hugin. Uh, he's the senior game master. Uh, he usually restores hacked accounts. He handles the most complicated hacking cases that you can imagine. Uh, massive rabbit holes, massive corporations. Uh, and that's him. I'm Ashling. Uh, I'm a bit of both. I do a bit of RMT investigations, a bit of hacked accounts, um, some of the botting. Basically, whenever the help is needed, that's me. And finally, this is Tinger. Uh, he is our... Botmaster, well, not the botmaster, but the master who is, who is handling the bots. Uh, he is the wizard of all the data. Um, and yeah, he is a very valued member of the team, although he has just joined. Okay. So this is how it's going to work. Uh, I'm going to introduce the team, which I already did. Uh, we're going to be talking of botting, of RMT of the hacked accounts, we will show you some graphs, some statistics, um, and hopefully we'll be able to spark your interest in what we're doing. Uh, and then we will get your questions. So whatever you have, please ask us. All right, and this is Stinger. Hello, I'm CCP Stinger. Yeah, sorry about the presenter monitor, but all the screen real estate went to the main stage. But okay, I'm gonna be talking about bots in EVE Online, how we're handling them. And when we speak about bots, we speak about automation in EVE Online. And specifically, everything that a player can do without interaction with the game client. And the downside is, well, it's just one search away. You just simply type in in Google, and you get multiple results, and it's even easier than searching for a recipe of a shepherd's pie. They are not hidden, the bots, for EVE Online. They are even being advertised, even to such an extent that they offer a subscription service, their own store, where you can just simply click, select what you like to run, and that is it. But the problem is, all the gaming industries are fighting against cheating. I mean, aimbots, wall hacks, and other cheats that are out there. It's not just us, it's the whole gaming industry. And it goes hand in hand with credit card fraud, with hacking, and with real money trade, because that is what everything being fueled by. To such an extent that this is a malicious software. If you install it, you don't know what it is, right? If you install our launcher and our game client, you know for sure, okay, CCP Games, they won't be installing anything bad, right? No, <laughs> just kidding. But those programs could be used to steal your data, banking details, hack your accounts, or even just simply mine crypto on your computer. And you don't want that, right? So this is what we're up against. To show a little bit more, to give you a little bit more insight, I'm going to be speaking about a very sophisticated organizations that are running bot farms 24-7 in EVE Online. And they are very sophisticated. They create accounts with a single click, 
like 10, 15 accounts per day that they just simply put away for three weeks, four weeks, because out there in New Eden, there is already a batch running 24 seven, generating the ISK to be sold on the black market. And when we, and it's to such an extent that they are trying to hide themselves from us using single use machines. That means one account uses one specific computer and that machine will not appear again. But we're still able to find them. We're still able to remove them from the game, even to such an extent that we identify the patterns, how the accounts are created, and we ban those. And that is, nearly, and that is our daily task that we perform. We're literally farming the bot farms. Now, that is the problem. That is our constant struggle, and that is a never stopping um, never stopping battle. It's our fight against the Hydra. We cut one head off and two will appear in its place. Now, to illustrate a little bit more about learning and development, Botting Front is a prime example how our team changed in the last year. We did a small restructuring in the team. We also took a look at the tools that we have in our inventory. We requested changes to those tools. We started to uh, use new tools that makes the life a little bit easier, that makes us, that makes, uh, allows us to process bigger data. And that means we can identify the bots in EVE, the patterns, much faster. And this is very important, much more precise, because you don't want to ban players, right? That's bad for business. Um, just a second, I lost, I lost my thought. There we go. But it's not only us who changes. There's multiple bots out there, there's multiple pat patterns out there, and I'll show you in a graphic form what it means. The bots also adapt. They release updates. Sometimes those updates are even corresponding to the major EVE Online updates. And yeah, this is our struggle. At this point, I would like to give a big thank you and a shout out to our programmers who are now part of the customer support tools team who make all our wishes come true. But unfortunately, there is still not a workable solution for just one big red button that you press and that will make all the bots disappear from New Eden. However, that's what we're aiming for. We're also aiming for to be noticed by you, by players. Not by this security panel, not by the dev block, not by the numbers in graph form, but you in the game. Because botting, maybe you don't know, but it affects you too, as a normal player. For example, you're roaming around with your corp mates, with your alliance mates, right? Try to find interesting, good fights, good targets. You jump into a local, uh, you jump into a solar system, you appear in the local, and those bots are already scattering away to their safe spots. You cannot beat the reaction time of a machine. Maybe if I am able to connect your thought to the keynote that we had, if we take the approach of mining, right? Just imagine a new player who just started his journey in New Eden. We all know how complicated it is, right? We all been there. And he heard that to get a starting capital to advance his career in the game, it's good to start mining. And then he warps into asteroid belt just to discover what? That all ore is gone. Because those guys are there, they're botting, and he, if we allow botting to go unchecked in New Eden, that is not gonna be a great experience, no matter the age of a capsuleer in New Eden. Now, yes, of course, I would like to show you some graphs and numbers. Now, of course, they're not so, so good compared to the EVE keynote, but still, um, yeah, this is the numbers for January, for the whole year of 2021 and the first couple of months of 2022. And you can see there's a huge dip in March, right? And that is exactly when our team went under some restructuring. That's where we took a look at the tools that we have. That's where we requested the improvements. That's where we started to 
use new tools. And immediately after that, the numbers go up. Now, those numbers are shown are the perm permanent suspension and temporary. Those bot farms that I was speaking about 24-7, right? If we uncover them, they're gone forever. Like, immediately. No questions asked, okay, we see what you're doing, goodbye. The temporary ones is where we actually see that those accounts have a player interaction. A normal player interaction, but when the player goes to work or goes to bed or has other activities, why would he, because if online is there, he turns on the bot. Now, we don't want to remove him immediately forever from the game, but we do want to send him a message like, we see there is a temporary ban, first offense, stop it. And in most cases, that actually works. They stop botting, they don't try it again, and that's it. However, in some cases, they wait for five, six weeks, and then turn it on again. And that's where we come and say, okay, you didn't get the message, bye-bye. You're gone forever. Now, at the end of the year, you see like December, January, at the turn of the year, there is another dip in the numbers. And this is where we actually uncovered that there was a pattern change, that there was a change in behavior in bots. And that is what I was talking to you about our constant battle. We ban, they change, we uncover, we ban again. That was their reaction to our numbers of bans issued, they changed, we realized, we adapted, and we're going up again. Now, of course, I would like to finish my part with the top five ships used in botting, right? Number five, it's a battleship. Does somebody in the audience have an idea what, yes? Nope. Okay. Number four is used for mining. Huh? Cheap and easy accessible. Right. Very good for the bot farms, for the organized bot farms. Number three is a frigate. Nope. Close? Nope. What was that? Number two is a drone boat, cruiser class. And number one, just a second. Unfortunately, I stopped drinking beer. Well, maybe not unfortunately. I save a lot of money here in Iceland. So I have this beer token. And I would like to give it to the player who will guess the number one ship? First, come here, pick up your token. Gila, very tanky, very sophisticated drone damage. And as you can see from this all, it seems that drones are an easy way to bot. That is me, that is for botting. And now I'll give the microphone back to my colleague, CCP Ashling. Thank you. Right, thank you, Stinger. Uh, that, was, that was great. I had no idea of some of this stuff. Oh. Okay. Live and learn. All right, RMT. Uh, this is a huge topic. Um, it was really tough to find something that uh, would be interesting to talk about and maybe would be interesting for you guys to hear. So. RMT is always associated with the illegal activity. This is like a, this is always a vicious circle. They come from hacked accounts. They go to seller. They sponsor the bot farms. Um, they go to all the other activities. Then they come to the ISK buyer, and then ISK buyer by purchasing more items, they're just sponsoring more MT. So as you see, it never, never, ever ends. Buying and selling ISK, even despite all of the all of the risks, people are still doing it, and it's not uh, it's not just our game problem; it's the problem in every game. Why is that? Uh, for sellers, it seems very straightforward: uh, working while you're playing, quick and easy, and working against the system. So I'm fighting against the capitalism. I'm a good guy. 
um, for buyers. They are getting quickly, they're getting items without any risk, or so it seems. They have an illusion of supporting smaller businesses. Um, and yeah, and that's it. But the reality of RMT is extremely different. Uh, there are huge risks associated with it, not just getting banned, not just losing the accounts, not just uh, getting cut off access, you know, from the favorite game, but also getting chargebacks, getting scammed. And this is actually extremely, um, extremely popular. Okay, so these are some numbers. These are RMT bans for 2021 and 2022. As you can see, as my colleague has mentioned, there's a dip in March, and then it steady goes up, 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 up. Um, sometimes, you know, some numbers getting low, uh, but it's in no way an indication of our activity. It's just sometimes it, they're harder to catch. And this is the total number of bond RMT accounts, 10,000. That's a lot. That's what we've been doing. Okay, what I would like to talk about, uh, about the individual sellers and the organizations. They're very different, but essentially we get to all of them. Individuals, they start very quick, they get cash quickly as well. Um, they are limited just by one person, maybe just one or two accounts. Um, they can get scammed and they are getting scammed. Um, they take some time to identify, um, and some of them wish to retrieve the accounts. For example, if they sell the accounts to player auctions, there's a high chance that someday they will come back asking for the account back. But unfortunately, the account is gone. So RMT organizations, they're a bit more different. They take some time to establish the network. You can't just create an account and start RMTing. This is uh, a bit more sophisticated process under it. Uh, they do not run by an individual, it's never. Uh, they are always associated with the bot farms, they always need to get their profit from somewhere, and they actually need, to, uh, need a big profit, you know, to sell as much ISK as possible, like it's a, it's a big generation. All right, all of the assets from the big RMT organizations, they are obtained through hacked accounts, fraud, and botting, and there is no exception to that. Trust me on this, I've been doing this for a couple of years already, and it's just always the same story. Uh, when they are banned, they are banned for good. All right. Ah. Before, uh, yeah, before that, I just wanted to give a very quick example of um, like how it can happen. For example, let's say player A, he wants to sell his accounts. He wants a bit of the quick cash. So they go to the player auctions, they sell their character, and they think that the character went um, into the good hands. and. While they're not playing the game, the character will still be there. However, uh, the player A, in a week, finds out that his character has been extracted. All of his items have been sold, and all of the items, like all of the money that were gained through the skill injectors and skill extractors, are being moved into the vicious RMT circle. And this is it. Uh, and to top this off, in a week, player A gets the notification from his bank that there's a chargeback. This is very common. This is much more common than, um, than you think. And then player A obviously asks us to help, but there's not much we can do. There's just, there's just nothing. Okay, how can all of you help and how we ask players to help? Players reports. I'm gonna talk about two type of reports, uh, bot reports and just ticket reports. So something about the bot reports. We received a lot last year, and we have, yes, you have been the one submitting them. Thank you, thank you so much. This is, this is fantastic. Really? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was me. <laughs> that was, yeah, <laughs> that was probably my mail that you received. It's automated, but um, yeah, fun fact, they are all getting looked at. All of them are being investigated. Uh, sometimes we are getting a bit overflown with them, and why is that? Uh, because they usually are taken as all sorts of tool. Like player spamming the, you know, the, the local, I'm gonna report him through the bot reports. I don't like this guy, I'm gonna report him, he must be a bot, you know? This is not a valid reason. Like if you don't like someone, if, if someone lost a fight, not a valid reason, please 
don't. Um, yeah, uh, and also the tickets. Tickets are also getting looked at, always, always, always. If you suspect someone of RMT behavior, please write to us and we will 100% have a look at this. All right, and with that, I'm going to give the mic to my colleague, CCP Hugin. So, uh, as you can see on, on this slide, these are the statistics for accounts reported to us or, or detected by us as hacked since January 1st, 2021. It's worth keeping in mind, though, that even though we are banned as hacked, these numbers may include accounts which were shared or sold, as well as those of pilots liquidated if the profits were used for RMT. As for preventive measures, uh, members of the player experience teams uh, are monitoring all technical detection tools available to us 24-7 and intervening inter immediately if there are any signs to indicate that accounts are being hacked, used for fraudulent payments or real money trading. But it's also worth keeping in mind that this is also in the hands of the players, so you should by all means consider using a password manager or a strong password, a, a complex one, and of course to activate two-factor authentication. That is a really good tool to secure your accounts. Because this is what happens when accounts are hacked. They're, nowadays they're nuked. So just, yeah, keep this in mind. Anyway. But we also, of course, rely on players to, to report to us, contact us immediately if they suspect that their own accounts or those of friends or, or corp members or whatever are being hacked. And also if they notice some weird activity, uh, uh, for example, in the contract system, to indicate that there are, there are people who are either using the contract system to, for RMTing or for fire sales, so-called. But I'll get to that later. But anyway, to put this into a historical perspective, uh, these are the numbers of compromised accounts handled since 2014. Uh, the hacking incidents and patents that have changed dramatically in early 2016. First of all, when you noticed that the security of vast numbers of email addresses had been compromised. And tracing that back, uh, we found, I believe, the earliest signs of that in, from July, August of 2015, but they didn't start using this energetically uh, until some time later. Yeah. Uh, and what happened is, in late 2016 and early 2017 and throughout the year 2017, RMT operatives started making use of compromised email addresses to hack and liquidate player accounts in the most hurtful manner to the community. Because as much as players welcomed the chance to extract skill points as of March 2016, whether to redistribute them for their own pilots or sell the injectors to finance their in-game activity, and as much as the players also welcomed the transition to free-to-play in November of that year, the RMT operatives turned this to their nefarious advantage, using emails to hack accounts and instead of liquidating assets only as they had done before, started stripping pilots of their entire skill points and selling off the profits for real money. Oh, sorry, not yet. <laughs> this is clearly reflected in the graph and explains the immense in increase since 2017. And this main, uh, especially in 2017, yeah. But for the decrease since 2017, this may in part be the result of improved detection tools, which we have now, but also the constant monitoring and the awareness, both in the community and on our behalf, of this, this problem. Um, 
but there is also an intensified focus uh, since 2017 uh, in the money trails and the identification of entire RMT networks, uh, which, are, which are using all kinds of means, and especially the hacked accounts, because that is, of course, the uh, worst problem for the player. Uh, and related to this, one must also keep in mind that professional RMT operatives are extremely organized. They work fast and are ready to adapt to any interference on our part, whether they choose to extract skill points or start it uh, selling entire accounts on third-party websites for real money. They sell the pilots on the character bazaar for ISK using fraudulent payments to actually transfer them to new owners, or they use them for character sales scams and then move the, the profits to distributor accounts where they dispose of them very fast. Uh, and to mention a very nasty scenario, not only are individual pilots at risk, if they hold high positions such as CEO or director or accountant roles and in an active multi-member and wealthy corporation, the hackers will turn this to their extremist advantage indeed, transferring ISK and assets from all corporate wallet and hangar divisions within a matter of minutes, selling them for severely reduced or so-called fire sale prices before disposing of the entire profits. An operation like this, regardless as to the volume of the assets will take them 30 to 45 minutes at most. So to conclude, I wish to stress the point once again to use password manager, strong passwords, and two-factor authentication to really stop this. And to the hackers and RMT operatives, sorry, where am I? Oh yeah, no sorry. Yeah, to, to use this to, to secure accounts. Just to name a, a, a recent example, accounts of a player had been hacked through the email address, but one of the accounts had two-factor authentication active and escaped this fate. But the others were liquidated uh, very fast. Like I say, if, if it's a, an account on the pilot they're liquidating, it will take them 10 to 15 minutes with corporations a little longer. But yeah, so secure your accounts by all means. And to the ISK sellers and hackers, I only wish to say this. All right, I'm Grimmy. I'm here to tell you about fraud. Not a lot of nice things to say about that, really. It's a, it's a crime, and uh, it's a problem for everyone in, in uh, e-commerce across the globe, whether it's an airline or people selling socks. Everybody has to deal with this. Um, it's a tale as old as time. It's a sad fact of life that a lot of people who are perfectly happy to steal and cheat to get their way. There are no Robin Hoods. They steal from the poor and sell to the rich. And... Uh, these are also very organized groups of people in doing this and have been doing this for years. We've had problems with fraud since day one when Eve started in 2003. So this is nothing new. And uh, it's, you know, they find the way of least resistance, basically. It's always a cat and mouse game. We're chasing them and they're chasing us. You know, sometimes we're the cat, sometimes we are the mouse. But we are always the cheese. We make the offers, we make all the packages that are on sale, so you know, we can try and make them less uh, accessible for frosters. Uh, some numbers, these are um, accounts that are banned in, uh, banned in relation with fraud in the period of January last year. Uh, this tends to be a bit seasonal for fraud because there's a lot of scams around the holidays, Black Friday and all these, uh, all these uh, Christmas and all that. And most of you probably have seen something like this. It's a very, very prevalent uh, during these, these um, later months in the year. And 
it just you know we get to feel it a lot. Uh, moving from fraud specifically, uh, these are numbers for all types of bands, for all you know all accounts that we banned in the last you know, year and uh, so far this year. Confic confiscated disk. This is the isk in wallets on the characters on these accounts, and. Uh, this is a lot. So anyone want to take a guess on how much we have on that graph? Huh? So these are, these are trillions. This is RMT. This is this is players who've been busted for RMTing, for botting, all this, all the all the good stuff. Uh, added to this, we can, you know, there are uh, wallets of corporations that have been banned. You know, entire co entire corporations. So we can probably, you know, add fifty percent to this number, and then there's plaques and ships and other assets. So it's a it's a lot more. These are just you know easy to get numbers on on the wallets. Ninety three thousand accounts banned during the period for all all offences, permanently banned for all offences. Uh, to put this in perspective, if we if we turn this amount into fully fitted titans, <laughs> well you know the. I went with I went with 125 billion isk. So, anyone quick at calculating uh, this? <laughs> 166, just with a isk in the wallet. Probably well over 250 total with all valuables on the account, or like your know, plaques and and other items. So it's it's pretty big. As such, you know, it's, I'd like to have 166 fully fitted titans. That's yeah. So that's it for us, uh, and we'll turn it over to you for some questions. Are there any questions? You can, like, if you want to address the question, you can just point us or, or be a general. So I have a question. <coughs> Hello. Is it on? It's on. I think. Yeah. I have a question that's not directly related to this topic, but on the topic of security. Uh, <clears throat> I was wondering whether the CCP security team could assist in solving what I think is one of the most interesting conspiracy theories I know from Eve. Uh, to be fair, my background, I played from 2004 to 2011, and then we started in uh, COVID. Uh, so I want to ask, how far back do the logs go on CC? On CC. On CC. Well, that is a question that <laughs> not is... Um, towards this team. Um, Further than we usually look. You know, I guess you can probably go pretty far back. But you speak but about yeah. CC. I, yes, I, I would test like server. to ask yes, the test server, because I'm interested in events that occurred in 2008 to 2010. <laughs> no chance. We actually have in the audience a person who is responsible for the test server. Okay, uh, okay. It's not, no. Well, if anyone wants to hear the conspiracy theory, uh, I did post this originally on the e forums back in the day in 2010. Uh, CCP quickly locked the threat, uh, and it has to do with, well, the best way to earn trillions in Eve, Pandemic Legion's uh, three time alliance tournament win in the period that exactly coincided with. Uh, the monkey spheres confirmed hacking of transmissions to the Eve server to not be seen in local. So I was wondering whether the team could try and look at logs from CC to confirm whether there had been spying on teams without appearing in local 
in the run-up to each of these tournaments because after he was banned, they did not do as well in the tournament. Actually, I can answer this question right now. So there's a small little thing. There's a like little kitty who is who looks a bit upset. Um, unfortunately, like, we cannot really answer about individuals. So if 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 it's about any band player or any corporation or any alliance, we probably will not be able to answer it since it's the, I mean, you know, GDPR and everything and privacy policy. Uh, but I mean, if it's general logs, not that far, <laughs> no. <laughs> But yeah, I'm sorry about the players. We cannot, we cannot really answer. But thank you so much. I have two questions. One is fairly short. Currently, you receive a code in your email for two-factor authentication. It, it works, but it's rather impractical to deal with. If you have to open your email client, I have to do my code on my email client. Get the email, cut and paste the code. I would much rather use my Google Authenticator. Would that be something that we can implement? So I can just have all those codes for all those accounts, and I have quite a few of them, in one spot. You can? Really? <laughs> oh. Okay. Here's the fool. <laughs> well, I Here's guess fool. the room answered yeah. your question. Uh, yes. sec second question is more etherical. Um, Eve, Eve is a multi-account multi thing. Many pay, people play with many, many accounts. In the past, there have been bots, and it's good that they've been banned. Uh, but where's the limitation? OK, I was thinking you were going into one specific direction that was always being brought up, and we're prepared. <laughs> <laughs> we are prepared. Um, yes, uh, many of you just don't have one account or one character. Um, Probably 10, 15, 20, 35, oh, closer. Uh, you can play EVE on as many accounts as you want. In the same time, if you have the human resources to actually control them without using a special software. Because using a special software is what? Thank you. So yes, um, if they're all Omega, you can launch them at the same time, you can play them at the same time, and that is fine. If they're not Omega, and you're by, by, bypassing the alpha limitation, right? That is bad. And yes, when it comes to input broadcasting, is Boxer. That's the, I mean, it's slowly, slowly, and slowly gets not more, like, it, it fades out, because we have now uh, multiple launch of their accounts via the launcher, right? You have another tool that can arrange your windows, like Eve O Preview, for example. So is Boxer is slowly fading away. That offered that functionality, but even more. So yes, if you have, for example, 15 accounts and you're just doing mining, right? But you control each and every window, every client, inter like client um, instance, that is fine. But if you control via one input all the clients. That is input broadcasting, and that is a violation against the UR. What I also want to add to that, uh, like with all third-party programs, there's a huge, huge risk when using them. Uh, why? Because the development can be taken anywhere, you know, like uh, something as innocent um, as, I don't know, like, oh, I will show you a couple of free pictures or free gifts while you're playing, you know, EVE Online as innocent as that, can be turned into something extremely, extremely hurtful the, you know, the next week. And there's no way for us to control it, there's no way for you to control it, um, and yeah, it will result in a very unfortunate accident. Yeah, all right. Is there any um, prioritization between different kinds of botting and like their effects? Like you go after I assume you go after like sort of these per perpetuating groups more aggressively than like John's first mining experiment. Um, but do you do any, do, do, does botting that affects, I guess I would say, gameplay for other players like, like faction warfare botting can affect the, the result of the faction warfare system outcomes versus like someone running a bot 
mining an, or doing anomalies in NullSec while it is botting is not, you know, that is not directly affecting another player's gameplay that day, if that makes sense. Is, does it prioritize like that or is it just we go after everything all the time? Now, um, yeah, uh, we try to go after everything all the right. time. But um, since I'm doing this task of voting, my main, main um, goal, because I'm coming from customer support, mm -hmm. my main goal is not to deal with tickets. <laughs> <laughs> not to generate tickets okay. <laughs> for the GMs to handle. I mean, team security handles the tickets when it comes to the bans, we issue the ban, we take care of that. And yeah, I'm a little bit lazy on that front, so I try not to generate tickets, and that means I'm trying, when I issue a ban, I try to be 100% sure that that ban is deserved, mm -hmm. right? And with faction warfare, yes, uh, it affects, as I mentioned in my presentation, botting does affect, to some degree, everyone in EVE. And we do go after faction warfare, especially because those are sometimes ruining, not, sure. but it's not many actually. From Faction Warfare, there are not many bots out there, but you're right, there are some bots that are running that try to, uh, you know, uh, isolate themselves in space. And one of those things is, for example, um, Abyssal Dead Space. Mm -hmm. That's where the warm frigates are roaming, that's where the gilas are roaming, and it's uh, very popular because it just simply removes the human factor, the human factor that the bot needs to deal with if it would be mining uh, dungeons in NullSec or low security space. It might sound like a w mean question, but it isn't meant that way. Um, you're the police, right? So uh, every police has an internal affairs department. Who is monitoring your work? Is there, for example, the CSM in involved? <laughs> well, um, I'm also a part of internal affairs, so I'm <laughs> I'm the judge, I'm the jury, I'm the executioner. No, um, to answer your question, uh, that task is being split uh, between multiple people, and uh, they operate uh, they operate on their own. So it's not like uh, it's uh, we try to you know there is this famous saying: trust but verify. Right? Sorry, I, I'm pulling this out of Chernobyl series from HBO, Trust But Verify, and this is how we try to operate with internal affairs, that there are multiple people who are doing just generic tasks, you know, like adding Omega game time here, there, converting accounts, but when it comes to investigation, that those people independently investigate and then present results to a team lead, to a team internal affairs lead, and then he can paste it together and see if there's something needs to be brought up or not, and to answer the CSM question, no, we don't. But maybe this is uh, actually a good idea. Um, I'll write it down and share it with our team to see that maybe at some point, you're right, we should bring another source from outside just simply to take a look at this. So what I also want to add uh, is that every time there is a big investigation that involves like multiple people and not just like a single bot farm, uh, it's always four of us who make the decision. We always have like a special page, you know, we, we all share the evidence, we all, you know, communicate like, are you sure that this is happening? Are you sure? Like, are we 100% sure? So no, there's no bonds that are done on a whim, you know, only because some of us feels like it. No, they're all being extremely carefully checked. Just simply because we don't want to deal with tickets. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly, yeah, yeah. I mean, as, I, as I said, it, it wasn't meant as a mean question. No, 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 <laughs> absolutely not. It's a really good question, yeah, and I understand where it comes from. You know, there are always trust issues, especially us handling such, you know, complicated cases that affect all of you and multiple accounts. We just, we have to be sure what we're doing. Not specifically. No. Thank you for the question. Um, when I report um, a player XYZ 1 to 150 in local, is that something that actually helps you or rather not? 
Yes, reports always help. Uh, however, like, don't be disencouraged if certain action is not taken. Every report is looked at. Um, RMT report, bot report, it's just, it's just how it is. Uh, some reports are actually very easy to investigate and it takes like a couple of minutes to just like, is this guy botting? Is this this? Is this happening? Nope, then, you know, then it's just not. I understand that sometimes it can be really suspicious, but um, for example, if, um, let's say if you see in the local chat uh, players named like one, two, three, four, five, you know, but you actually would be surprised. There are so many corporations, well, not so many, but there are some corporations that have actual members with these names and there, there's actual human input, you know, under these names. So just mm. don't judge by the names sometimes. Does it help when you look at the implement data of the first clones? Uh, in a, within minutes, 10, 20 clones have the same birthing dates. Is that also something that you see more or less or? Well, um, as I mentioned, there are organizations out there like specifically that are doing botting and they can create the accounts uh, because you just see the characters, right? Um, we see the accounts. They can create accounts with a single click, just simply, you know, incremental ID, and then it skips two IDs because some human actually created an account. Uh, when it comes to those characters, it's not against the rules actually to create um, mass characters, I guess, with a single click. Um, maybe at some point we're gonna change our stance on that, but right now, um, I mean, there is no rule that says uh, you're not allowed, you need to be humanly prese uh, present to create. A, uh, there is a method actually to create even the same portrait, exactly the same. I don't know about it, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So n to answer your question, um, yes, it's shady, but it's fine. Hey, by the way. Uh, I have a personal idea that uh, Blackout was rolled back because uh, bot seeing software wasn't prepared. Uh, it's, like, it's not a real question. Question is, uh, did you see any evidence like botting behavior changing during Blackout? Because I, I do believe you have some, like not exact proof, but like voting behavior changed. <laughs> well, uh, the blackout that you're referring from the graphs from the keynote, right? Uh, it doesn't correspond to the this team's activity. Uh, it was first part was a joke. <laughs> ah, okay, sorry. So, a actual question: Like, did you did, did you see any uh, bots activity changing during this blackout? Or uh, you refer to the blackout period, right? Blackout no. when uh, Nulsec had no local. Yes, the period. Yes. Okay. To the period. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, that is unfortunately before my time on this team. So okay. I o always I will me. not bullshit my way through this. <laughs> I will just say sorry. That was before my time. I don't know. Okay, maybe someone else. Uh, can't remember specifically, but th this constantly changes, and we're always, you know, looking at new things. And you know, this, I don't have details on this specific situation. Maybe try next time. But, <laughs> but to uh, to give you a little bit of understanding how those bots work, right? Uh, if you're mining in a big ship, how long does it take an orca to warp away? Instantly. Yeah, but the thing... Depending on the fitting, I guess. But if there is no local, some bots are stopping operating, right? Exactly. Because they don't have the input. It was my point. <laughs> I know where you're coming from, but I don't have the data. Sorry, it's okay. before my time as a uh, member of this team. But potentially, just simply not having a local would solve a lot of issues for us, I guess. Uh, but I don't think it's a valuable game design solution. Said. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I had uh, one discussion with some people about the rules for playing alpha or just multiple accounts within one household. Um, there are, of course, the guys who say, well, you just have to use a second laptop and you can do it. So I'm not wanting to go in that direction because it's clearly against the rules. 
but there are also people coming up regularly on Reddit or somewhere, oh, I have been banned, my child was playing on, on an alpha account, and um, uh, that meant that we were banned and uh, I'm not getting support by the um, official support and everything. Um, my question to this, I'm not sure if you can answer, is um, how do you track these all these special cases like sharing your account with a child and as if you are allowed to do that with one? And also if, because uh, people say, well, just use a VPN, if maybe that actually flags you as someone who shouldn't be playing this way. And that um, I'm just interested in how it went because everyone ju was just totally speculating about it and yeah. All right, to answer your question, uh, first about account sharing, uh, like this is, well, this is not allowed. Uh, this is against the EULA, and there are many complicated cases when, you know, a child logs into the account, you know, extracts the character and then sells it on the market, you know, like a toddler. So it's, it's very common. The um, allows for, for <laughs> sharing one account. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, still, you know, sharing accounts come with lots and lots of difficulties. Um, it's not allowed, people still do it. Um, unfortunately, like for, you know, for obvious reasons, we cannot police this, like we cannot check every single account you know, to be shared. But when this comes up, if this comes up, uh, they're usually, you know, all hell breaks loose. Yeah, does this... Uh, Share, sharing accounts in itself, I mean, is, is not maybe such a serious problem and especially not if it's within a family or something like that but it can it can also create problems for example if let's say one of the family members suddenly does not live with the family anymore but has the login details mm. ex-wife for someone for example <laughs> there have been examples of that and uh, there is also i mean there is sometimes uh, yeah the, the 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 interest of that person in uh, let's say, getting some money back or something like that, or, or, or ruining the account out of spite or whatever, you know. So if, if something like that happens when you share an account, there's always a risk involved in that if you decide then to, to report it, let's say, as hacked, we can quite uh, easily, or, or let's say, for, for very, very solid evidence most of the time uh, to, to differentiate between shared accounts let's say sold accounts and hacked accounts. And our policy at this point is, is very strict in that, in that we are not repairing damages to, to, to shared or, or, or sold accounts, you know, if, if, if you want, want them back at some point. But, but with hacked accounts, we are ready to, to make some exceptions if we can verify this situation. And we try to do our best to, to repair it in as far as we can under the circumstances. But like I said, I mean, it's not always possible if, if there is no evidence mm. to support that. And it was a third party. Yeah. To answer about the alpha omega limitation, uh, nobody is going to ban you if you are able to launch two alpha accounts at the same time or three. There is a limitation in place, but we do know it is possible to, even sometimes without... Yeah, I mean, it's it's um, there is a limitation. This limitation sometimes doesn't work. So if you are sharing an alpha account, I mean, if you're sharing the same machine to launch an Omega and Alpha, it's totally fine. You will be not banned. However, if you abuse this, and we do look at the abusers and we do track them, then of course they are gone. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a gray line. Nobody gonna get you banned. But if you start abusing, you are forcing us to react. And I want to add to that, uh, like we always, uh, well, not always, but sometimes, you know, people claim to get hacked and everything, but uh, we see a lot. We have uh, so much information and it's not just information that we see, we can interpret it, you know. Uh, and yeah, it's very, very visible when the account has been shared or has been hacked, you know. So there's that. Thank you for the question. We are, just a second, we are nearly done. Uh, we need to have this room. Uh, so, last one last question. It's not a new question, it's more about extension on previous one, because we, do, we were talking about a sharing account, and like, 
half hour ago, there was a dude who filming how his daughter playing Eve, and it's literally sharing account, which is breaking Eula, and he's supposed to be banned to your words. But this is the, this, as far as I get, this is this inclusion, exclusion. If it's not for any bad thing like RMT or some bad stuff, then you like, okay, just, just don't do the bad stuff, isn't it? I mean, I mean, there is pure evidence. <laughs> I mean, you need to, in, yes, but you need to understand one thing, that we have the EULA and the yeah. TOS that says clearly, right, what you're doing with your accounts is just your business. If it becomes our business because you failed to follow the rules, fair? Yep. <laughs> yep. And we don't want it to become our business, so, like, please, you know, just... Uh, just abide the EULA, you know, be nice and everything. <laughs> Guys, thank you very much. It was so great to have you here. Please enjoy FanFest, enjoy Pop Crow. Thank you, guys.